Over the long weekend, maybe some of us went on a trip and had a vacation. Like us, a person by the name of Jonas Vincent or J.B. Solomon was also on a trip. But unlike us, he was not on a bus. He was not on a car. And certainly, he was not on a plane. He was on a road trip from Manila to Bicol by means of his wheelchair. His reason? To see his family and enjoy the view. JV's story is both inspiring and timely. JV caught the attention of the media and kind-hearted people who saw him wheeling down the road, rain or shine, gave him water and food. But contemplating on it, what do our PWD brothers and sisters and the advocates of the sector have to do to get attention? What about those who have difficulty hearing or speaking? those who have visual problems and other forms of disability. And for us, especially in the government, what have we been doing to address their needs and promote their welfare? Ladies and gentlemen, this is an opportune time for us to continue the discussion. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Don Cabral, and from the Center for Local and Regional Governance of the University of the Philippines, National College of Public Administration and Governance, and the Coalitions for Change program of the Australian Embassy and the Asia Foundation, our gratitude for being with us today. Welcome to this forum, which we entitled Enabling the Disabled, Assessment of Local Mechanisms for Programs and Services for Persons with Disabilities, Focus on PIDAO. To formally begin, may I call on Mr. Keating at chance of the second, Senior Program Officer of the Asia Foundation for his Magandang hapon po to our uh, partners from the UPNC Bank, from the Bureau, uh, from the DILG, I see Boss Matt from the NCDA, from I also see familiar play, uh, faces from different PIDAOs that we have met and uh, partners in our work in uh, inclusive education and inclusive employment. The Coalitions for Change program, which is a partnership between the Australian Embassy and the Asia Foundation in the Philippines, started its work with the persons with disabilities uh, with the Full Able Nation program. Uh, this uh, program worked on making our elections more inclusive to persons with disabilities. Uh, in the past years, we have shifted our attention to inclusive education and, and inclusive employment, where we have met uh, most of our PWD colleagues here. And in our work, work, in our work in inclusive education and employment, PIDAO has always been repeatedly mentioned as one of the mechanisms to make the education of children with disabilities more inclusive and to promote inclusive employment. And we have seen some good examples. For example, when we see, uh, when we went to Carmona to visit uh, Ms. Rosebell here, and the our in-depth discussion on PIDAO happened when we were supposed to, on our way to the Senate, actually, to talk to the Senate, then Senate President, Coco, Lauren, uh, Coco Pimentel. Uh, we were in the car with Sir Rex, and it, because Sir Rex has been uh, PIDAO for the province, uh, he, we talked a lot about some opportunities in terms of uh, changing the policy uh, and helping uh, issues in the implementation of PIDAO. And that's where we, we had these ideas and presented it to our boss, who, who asked us the question, so how is PIDAO being implemented? Where could policy still be improved in terms of PIDAO? So these were the questions which we um, asked institutions research institutions focusing on local governance to, to study. And luckily, we have found a partner 
in the UP Center for Local and Regional Governance, and we are very excited to listen to the outcome of that research. Thank you very much, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Sir and King Team. Today we have a good mix of participants, aside from the Center for Local and Regional Governance and the Asia Foundation. We have representatives from six of the seven uh, LGU cases that we studied. We have uh, Carmona, Angeles, uh, Mandaluyong, Valenzuela, Camarines Norte, and Iloilo. Joining them are two more LGUs with Pigaos, Quezon City, and San Juan. And we're also expecting a uh, participant from the Vice, Mayor Leagues, uh, Vice Mayor's League of the Philippines. We have five national government agencies, NCDA, TESDA, DOLE, DST, and DILG. We have six educators of uh, special education. We have special education teachers, plus one health practitioner. We have nine disabled people's organizations and NGOs. And we have two sign language interpreters, and we are joined by the media. So, um, to all of you who have found time to be with us today, thank you very much. This study on the implementation of Republic Act 170, which mandated the creation of Persons with Disabilities Affairs Office in provinces, cities, and first to third class municipalities, and the designation of a focal person who shall perform the duties of a PIDAO in fourth to sixth class municipalities had three components. These are literature review and secondary and survey data, interviews with LGUs with no PIDAO, and case studies of seven LGUs with PIDAO. For the case studies, we had, as I mentioned, Carmona, Cavite, San Lorenzo Ruiz, Camarines Norte, Angeles, Mandaluyong and Venezuela City, and we have the provinces of Camarines Norte and Iloilo. Uh, may I introduce to you the team? Our project leader is Dr. Irvi Alampay, director of CLRG. For Carmona, we have Lourdes Santos Villar and Elaine Zaldon Contel. Please stand up. They are both from CLRG. And for Camarines Norte, we have Prijan Prieto and Rafael Montes, also from CLRG. And they also teamed up for the San Lorenzo case study. From Angeles, we have Patricia Patdu and Yula Marie Mangawang. Patty's from CLRG and Yula is from the Publications Office of the National College of Public Administration and Governance, UP Diliman. Mandaluyong City was studied by Elizabeth Kureg. And yours truly, Don Cabral. We are both from CLRG. In Valenzuela, we have assigned CLRG's Mary Cris de los Santos and Lourdes Santos Villar. And for Iloilo, the case study was carried out by Miss Selena Hamig and Patricia Pantu. So before we go to the next part, may I just announce that. Uh, in case you're hungry, we will be ser uh, serving uh, Miriam snacks outside. So uh, silently, please go, go to the back and have your snacks. Okay, on to the next part of the program, which is the presentation of the seven cases. May I invite one representative from each, from each case study site to briefly discuss with us the PIDAO experience in the case study sites. We will be having the following order. Camarillos Norte. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Iloilo, Angeles, Valenzuela, Mandaluyo, and lastly, Carmona. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Branch. I'm from CLRG, and together with Mr. Rafael Montes Jr., 
we went to, I went to Camarines Norte to check the case of the beat out there. I went there sometime in, sometime in March, and here are some of the, uh, the results of, uh, of the study. So the title of my presentation is uh, Poor Persons with Disability and Slash. There is Dignity, as you can see. You can still see that disability word there, but from our from the context of the study in Kamayan Snorte, what we found out in GIS is that we want to treat these people with respect, with equality, and therefore with dignity. And may I report to you some of the findings, the case of the Camarines Norte Persons with Disability Affairs Office or the CNPDAO. In total, as of 2017, the, the province has a total of 6,172 PWDs or equivalent to 1.14% of the total population. Uh, we based the population from the 2015 population as that is the most recent data that we had. Many are, uh, or 34.7% are ortho, and followed by 15.34% uh, who are uh, visually impaired or blind persons, and we have 11.86 as with mental disability. And the rest, we have speech, uh, multiple uh, disabilities, and hearing impairments or hearing uh, concerns. From the data that I has the uh, uh, the most number of PWDs at 29 percent. Jose Pangalinan follows at 12 percent and Mercedes at 11 percent. As to the to the gender uh, disaggregation, we do not have uh, data as 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 to that uh, information. So uh, as to this point, we are clueless as to the disaggregation, and I think that's that's an avenue where. The, the, the PDAO in Cameroon is not, they can improve later on. This is the office in CNPDAO. It's a small office in front of the PSWDO or the Provincial Social Welfare uh, Services Office. And uh, it was established in 2015 through a 2014 ordinance. Currently, um, the it used to have a federation, a provincial federation, but according to our to our PIDAO head, uh, Dr. Rex Bernardo, it has for some time deactivated, and it, in the CNP that was in the process of rebuilding this provincial network. Unfortunately, we observed some this decreasing budget. In 2016, when the CNP DAO was still under the umbrella of the PSWDO, we noted that it has a 2.14 million budget, in 2017, it is 1.21, and 2018, this year, it only has 1.17 million in total. The PDAO head has a position of a Disability Affairs Officer 3, with a solid green grade 18 and permanent status. He is being assisted by three job order staff, meaning they are non-tenured staff. and. Interns is a very important component in the operations of PIDAO. And even Dr. Rex Bernardo stated that the, the interns from different schools in Camarines Norte are really critical in the operations of the organization. And one out of four uh, in, the, in the staff complement is PWD. We have here some photos uh, and of the staff at work. Unfortunately, uh, our Kuya here uh, drives a lot for us when we were there, so we could not take a photo in action because I myself am the passenger. <laughs> and here are some of the activities uh, in the last uh, two, uh, more than two years. Very important of ha is having a wheelchair lift. You can see here. Uh, it improves access of PWDs in the provincial capital. The Kuya Kaurin, my K radio program which is an advocacy program, and we were, our colleague Ralph here is lucky to be able to participate in the program. Municipal advocacy, Dr. Bernardo goes to all the municipalities for this purpose, advocating PWDs and encouraging them to set up their own PDAOs. And of course, partnerships with, uh, with different organizations, access audits in, in, in partnership with other uh, national government organizations and, in, and 
uh, provincial offices, and of course, empowerment through uh, the organization of Canvia. You can see here the Canvia Massage Center, uh, scholarship programs for PWDs, and you can see here I am so lucky to be able to witness uh, a blind teaching another blind person. I, 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 I saw it in person that it's really possible. Some of the quotable quotes that we, that we, we uh, heard from the interviews, uh, one PW said, uh, Mas malakas ang loob ko kaysa sa panahin ko. It's a lesson that she learned when, when she was introduced that there is a PIDAO. So PIDAO was an instrument of empowerment for her. And some of uh, here, hanggang ngayon ay hindi pa rin sila mala ma malaya. Yung mga MSWDO pa rin ang gumagawa ng budget nila. Dapat sila maging champion, hindi sila oo ng oo. And another, mahalaga yung respeto sa mga MDAO na makitang sila yung gumagawa, hindi sila puppet ng probinsya. Those are quotable quotes from our very own Dr. Rex Bernardo, which basically uh, means the empowerment of MDAOs as key champions in this sector. Some uh, of the staff and key informants uh, said, matitrain ka talaga niya as long as kaya niyang ituro. Referring to Dr. Bernardo, who hindi mo alam, he's open to questions at tuturuan ka niya. And another said, alam na alam niya yung pinaglalaban niya at nararamdaman niya kung anong nararamdaman ng sinuserve niyang client. And during the interview, we could sense an awkwardness between between the CNP daw and PSW video, but they are open. No? If we can help them, we will help them. If they can help us, that's better. They are open to collaborative engagements in the future. So some more points, the importance of a PWD champion, complex selection process, it's a long process I believe, in the case of Dr. Rex. Empowering MDAOs, and some recommendations, you have to strengthen the, the organizational complement and capacity of the CNP DAO in terms of staff, in terms of the budget. Improve on databasing, include employability, skills, information, gender, uh, age, etc. And I, I think there is a need for a convenient PW in the office in Camarines North. I think the office is so small that you cannot fit in two PWDs in wheelchair should there be a time na magkasabay sila doon. And the PW operations manual because of some issues or glitches in the, in the implementation of the policy. And how about Peter? I, I was able to interview a deaf uh, in, in Camarines North to the help of an interpreter and uh, what Peter is saying is that he remains, uh, he remains to think that the sector itself is not yet inclusive because he thinks that he's left behind as a deaf in the province. So he suggests that there should be some interp interpreter in the, in the province. So that's the end of my presentation. We were given uh, five minutes. I, I, I think I, uh, I ended up Excellent. doing six, probably or seven, but I, I will uh, give the microphone the floor to my colleague, Sir Rafael Montes, to discuss about the case of San Lorenzo Ruiz. Um, San Lorenzo Ruiz is a municipality in Camarines Norte. It's uh, not so far away from uh, the provincial capital of Diet, but it's a fifth class municipality. So they have around uh, 285 persons with disabilities, but they're still trying to uh, register uh, all PWDs. That's about 2% of the total population. Um, more than 50% uh, of the PWDs are 20% are, are ortho, 25% are uh, visually, uh, visual uh, disabilities, and the rest would be mental, psychosocial, speech, hearing, multiple, and learning. So about 50% uh, have uh, ortho and visual disabilities. Um, most of the PWDs in this municipality are dependent on their families. Only around 5% are gainfully employed and 20% are self-employed, mainly in the agriculture sector. This is the municipal hall, very green. Uh, the PDAO was uh, established through an ordinance in 2012 but it was only activated in 2016. It was only given a budget 
in 2007, uh, 2017 with the 313,000, which is half of the 1% of the ERA, or the Internal Revenue Allotment, which they shared with the Office of Senior Citizens Affairs. So that would mean that uh, in 2016, they had zero budget. Uh, OSCA had uh, around more than 600,000. 2017, that 1% was split between OSCA and uh, PIDAO. And for this year, they have 358,000. Uh, so that's why the title is From Zero to Hero, because they were actually beginning with a zero budget in 2016. So this is the uh, organizational structure, if, if there is a structure in the municipality for the PDAO. The municipal PDAO focal person, in fact, is also a municipal uh, agricultural technologist who is part of the municipal agriculture office. He's a uh, PWD, but he works with the agriculture office. According to the ordinance, the, PDA, the municipal PDAO is supposed to be directly under the office of the mayor, but uh, well, currently the focal person has two immediate superiors, the municipal agriculture officer and the municipal mayor, but all the staff work is being done by the municipal social welfare and development office, which are, who are under the municipal social welfare and development officer who died last year. So they, they have an OIC for the office, but all staff work is being done by MSWDO staff. Um, according to the municipal ordinance, the municipal PDAO is supposed to have staff, but they haven't uh, appointed any, any yet. The appointment of the municipal PDAO is only a designation, additional work for his work in the uh, agriculture uh, office. So they've had some projects in the last two years. They had retrofitting of the ramps. They used to already have ramps, but because they were not uh, according to standard, they had to retrofit those and adjust uh, according to standards. Then they had some uh, assistive devices and customizations with the aid of the provincial uh, PDAO. They, are, they still have an ongoing registration for their PWDs. They, and they had livelihood training last year and hopefully to continue this year. Most of it in the uh, agriculture sector since this is a largely agricultural and rural municipality. So one, some of the quota, quotables that we had was one said that uh, uh, that uh, it's empowering to see that once local government intervenes in the lives, uh, assists with PWDs, uh, one uh, person with disability used to stay in the house. <laughs> and since he was given a wheelchair, he could now see his friends. Uh, the municipality is largely hilly, so it's very difficult for someone with a, dis uh, with, with a physical disability, whether if you recall the statistics, if you have ortho, ortho disability or you're visually, or for anybody who has a disability, to negotiate a hilly terrain. And they don't even have sidewalks for the main road. And then uh, their main uh, stumbling block is that they are a small municipality, fifth class municipality, they have limited funds, they cannot appoint a permanent PDAO, municipal PDAO, uh, because that, that would mean that they would breach their personal services limit. That would be just for the office head, but if they are going to appoint permanent staff, then they would not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just some uh, reflections, uh, because uh, the the setting up of a PDAO officer or office or focal person in fourth to sixth class municipalities would be a little bit difficult because they have financial limitations. Since it's an unfunded mandate, it will always be
governed by the mantra for local government, subject to availability of funds. And then redundancies in record keeping, uh, because uh, part of the municipal building burned down, including the records of the MSWDO. Uh, the records were burned, now they're trying to reconstitute uh, the, the records, but this is one time that redundancies would have been uh, great if they were around with regard to record keeping. Um, the role of the provincial PDAO and the local champion is very important to convince low-income municipalities which have competing uh, priorities. And if it's a poor municipality, you have a larger context of poverty that's involved. And uh, advocates from the province as well as local uh, advocates would be really uh, great to achieve what they have achieved in SLR. And finally, uh, having a double job as part of one department and as also being PDAO uh, may affect the productivity and focus of the PDAO officer. So, uh, next, LGU. <laughs> Did I, did I keep my time? Ako po si Selly. Ako po ang magdi-discuss ng case ng Iloilo uh, province uh, experience. Uh, this is the title of our uh, case study because I did this with Ms. Paddu. Looking back to move forward, tracing and igniting the pathways toward the establishment of a person oh. with this office in the province of Iloilo. Kasi po wala pa silang pidaw. Pero may mga uh, there have been uh, uh, steps taken towards uh, establishing the pidaw in the province of Iloilo. Uh, uh, this this uh, 50 51 percent and 49 percent refers to the total population of Iloilo. So uh, 51 percent are male and 49 percent are female. And out of the total of uh, 1.9 million population of Iloilo, there are 15,246 uh, PWDs. So that means it represents 79, uh, 0.79% of total population. Oton Town is the most populated town and it, it has also the highest number of PWDs. Barotak Nuevo has the least number with only 64 PWDs. Bingao, uh, there are five towns which do not have pa, uh, PWD. These are Bingawan, Batad, Carles, Rambunao, and San. San Rafael. This is the provincial, uh, I have the, here pictures of the provincial government and also the uh, provincial social welfare office because programs for PWDs are uh, provided by the provincial social welfare and development office in, in the absence of uh, PDAO. From the time that the uh, Magna Carta for PWDs was uh, uh, enacted, two ordinances have been uh, enacted by the provincial Go by the provincial Sangonian of Iloilo, and this is uh, the first was uh, ordinance creating the provincial council on the welfare of disabled persons, together with the office for person with disability affairs that was in 2007. And then uh, I think the uh, latest uh, R8-10070 was enacted in 2010. So while awaiting for the uh, IRR, they already uh, enacted this, 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 Sangonian, this Sangonian ordinance but actually, the OPDA was not uh, actually uh, operationalized. It was not enforced. However, in 2015, when the, gov when the provincial government was vying for another award, 
uh, for the SL SGLG. So the provincial governor appointed through a uh, appointed a technical coordinator for the council to, co to coordinate the programs of the council, but it still of that was not uh, established despite the provision by the Sangonian. And then in 2017, another ordinance was enacted creating the Provincial Council on Disabilities Affairs as well as the PIDAW, but until now they are still awaiting for the actual establishment and operationalization of PIDAW. But uh, still the programs for PWDs are provided by the PSWDO through a vocal person. So this is the focal person uh, together with some pictures yeah, represent, uh, showing their programs as well as the measuring tape for measuring the uh, wheelchair being provided or distributed among the PWDs. This is the Provincial Social Welfare and Development Officer and the former uh, technical coordinator for uh, PWD concerns. And this include the programs for PWDs being provided through the Social Welfare and Development Office, scholarship distribution of wheelchair, search for most PW-friendly LGU data banking, and employment matching in job fairs. Other programs include online registration, institutionalization of the uh, electronic manpower uh, skills, registry system for PWDs, including IPs and solo parents, partnership with NGOs, livelihood for PWDs, and coordination with lower level LGUs, PWD offices, and PWD uh, organizations. These are some of the quotations. Uh, it's, uh, I said that the, there is no PIDAW yet, so from the former PIDAW coordinator, he said that uh, nasa LGU yan, sa, kung saan ilads ang PIDAW, kung, kung gusto sa PSWD o dyan yan. Sa tingin ko, hindi budget ang problema. Another PWD said, numbers matter para pag PO ka, especially pag PWD. And walang pagkakaiba kung of the o PIDAW, sa batas nga lang PIDAW ang latest. Ang pagkakaiba daw, pag office ka, you have budget allocation so you can do your projects and programs. It's hard to find, according to another PWD, qualified and competent PWD to head PIDAW or as focal person because of qualifications, according to her. Continuity in, in advocacy work and presence of PW champions in LGU are important factors. So, here are at least three uh, champions for PWDs in the Sangunian of Iloilo, the provincial vice governor, the, chair, the chairperson as well as the vice chairperson of the committee focusing on PWDs. And here are some of the recommendations or requests of our PWDs. More employment and livelihood opportunities, monthly pension or subsidy, automatic field health membership, special civil service eligibility, uh, qualifications and requirements for them to be considered intelligent so they could access uh, more uh, privileges and benefits. Strict implementation and monitoring of anti-bullying and anti-discrimination against PWD laws as well as modest honorarium for BW services. So thank you very much. On behalf of the Angeles City team, my name is Patty. My teammate is Ms. Yula. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the accompanied team. Um, Mr. Philip Adair is here together with Mr. Allen. So, next slide. Okay, so the... Um, So there's a total of 411,630 people in Angela City. 0.8% of this 
of the total population or 3,370 PWDs have been registered by the ACOPTA office. Um, the most prevalent disability is orthopedic and most of them can still be part of the labor sector. Most of them are 35 years old and average. Unfortunately, we don't have any data on the current employment status of the PWDs. There, so, um, majority of the PWDs have at least graduated from high school, though some of, um, a number also have not had any formal education. 13% are college graduates, or some have even taken up postgraduate studies. So these are the essential ordinances for ACOPTA. So last 2012, the Ordinance 310 created the ACOPTA. However, there are no plantilla possessions yet, but it has been already placed under the mayor's office and has been given a 7 million annual budget. This year, we found out that they have already crafted and enacted an ordinance 45 that already gave plantilla possessions for ACOPTA and is still placed under the mayor's office and they have increased budget to 10 million. This is the structure, the current structure of the ACOPTA. Um, there are around 21 staff. It, that already includes the head, which is Mr. Philip Alayo. He is currently the OIC. Um, 11 ticket checkers are included, which are billeted in cinemas and the theaters. Around 8 take care of the day-to-day -day office work. That also include a staff from the CSWDO office that has been detailed and detailed to ACOPTA and helping them with their needs assessment. However, once we have checked the program budget last 2016 up to 2018, and also the, the annual investment plan from 2012 to 2018, it, it seems that the budget allotted in the ordinances was actually just 2 million in actuality. So these are just some of the words used to describe our OIC. I'd like to highlight the one in the middle. A lot of the keynote respondents have emphasized that the OIC and his team are very maculate and very resourceful, able to implement different programs and projects for PWDs and non-PWDs despite the 2 million um, budget that they have, which, act which actually also funds the salaries of the personnel. These are some of the, I just like to highlight some of the programs and projects that they have. So they have a partnership with the Angeles University Foundation, which provides assessment of the disabilities of the PWDs in Angeles. I think this is one of their workshops where the dean of the CAS was um, giving them some information on how to better identify PWDs. <laughs> okay, so technical difficulties, the succeeding <laughs> slide shows that some of the medical mission that ACOPTA has, including a cataract operation, again, it's also open to PWDs and non-PWDs. And they also have a partnership with DTI. This includes the shared services facilities, which provides livelihood opportunities for PWDs. On the right side, you have a picture of the, current, um, the future sheltered workshop, with, which will also be a venue for skills and livelihood trainings for PWDs in Angeles. Just a summary of the insights and recommendations given the very short time. On the development of ACOPTA, we found out that resourcefulness is very essential especially given that they have a limited budget to work with. So they have to look at different resources for um, funding their planned, pro planned activities. They all, I, we also recommend that the LGU increase their support, specifically on ensuring that the budget written in the ordinances are actually given to the office. Also to ensure that the government offices are accessible to PWDs we found out that there weren't really ways for the PWDs to go up to the second floor, so they have to be carried all the way. And much of the basic services or offices providing the basic services are in the second floor. 
and it would also be good to strengthen the relationship with the CSWDO more on um, having that agreement on the expectations from both offices. And to also ensure that the Angel Accessibility Committee frequent, um, does its frequent quarterly meetings, institutionalize database processes, and expand tasks to include monitoring on the implementation of the PIDAO and improvement of the sector as a whole. A fellow PW head for PIDAO is found to be more acceptable according to our interviews, but they also explain that it would be good to have a non-PWD to be included in the PIDAO staff. Monitor implementation of PWD-related laws, especially those on accessibility and discount privileges, and study the possibility of increasing benefits for PWDs. They gave an example of the PhilHealth, which I think has already been approved by the Committee on Appropriations. So that's it for Agnesi. Thank you very much. Villar Santos, and I would like to recognize the presence of Ma'am Snooky Cortez <laughs> okay, of Valencia and Avenal, who I see. Okay, so the, the title of the case is Road Works Ahead. So, like um, um, paving roads, um, there are a lot of things going on with the Pidao of Valencia City. Okay, so just a short profile. Um, there are a lot of PWDs in Venezuela. In 2017, there are more than 20,000 of them, according to CSWDO uh, data, and 3.3% of the 600,000 population of Venezuela. Okay, most of the PWDs in the city are with ortho and visual deficiencies, and majority of them are in an aging population, 46 to 60 years old, and so the needs for assistive devices in the city are great. Okay. And uh, the biggest population is in Barangay Marilas, who uh, also has the biggest, uh, it has the biggest concentration and the biggest population uh, in Valenzuela City. So um, just a short history, um, the PWD advocacy started in 1995 with the efforts of um, the former councillor uh, Cora Cortez. Um, these are just informal ways of um, gift giving with uh, PWDs. And then um, after six years, the PWD unit was established under CSWDO informally. And um, projects are being done in partnership with the City Health Office and the um, public uh, Employment and Services Office. In 2006, they established a federation uh, with the help of the LGU. There's uh, um, the VPDFI, the Venezuela Persons with Disabilities uh, Foundation. In and uh, in 2013, they formally adopted the OPDA ordinance, or the Office for uh, Persons with Disability Affairs, ordinance, but um, um, from uh, 2013, it still works under the PWD unit until formally in 2016, it was renamed as PIDAO and is now under a new officer in charge. Okay, um, I was unable to put in here that in 2015, they also approved uh, an ordinance establishing Barangay PW desks for all 33 uh, barangays of Valenzuela City. Okay, um, currently there's no formal organizational structure for, for PIDAO, uh, VC PIDAO, but uh, based on the observation during the interviews, um, there are three major um, personnel who are handling PW affairs, the PIDAO OIC, there's a PIDAO coordinator for, for barangays, 
who is currently a barangay kagawad or barangay counselor who works on a voluntary basis with the Rotary Club International and a focal person from CSWDO. They have 32, um, 32 staff, but all of them are contractuals. Um, okay, so these are the breakdown of the current work. There are 12 people who are usually in the office and 20 field assessors. Um, this structure is because they are on a major road work. So the road work is about um, reassessing the PWD data okay, of, of the city. So they are trying to track the, because the movement of PWDs in Valenzuela City is quite hard to, to track. Some are going out of the city, some are becoming senior citizens, and so they have to do major as a reassessment. Okay. And so, these are the um, some of the programs currently being done during the uh, PWD assessment, which also includes the issuance of PWD IDs for the city. There are still um, on the side and in partnership with other um, agencies or departments in the city. So they have awareness weeks for, for autism, for cerebral palsy, and other uh, PWD concerns, and then general assemblies done with the federation, provision of assistive devices, job fairs, and then um, participation in national events such as spectacular and then Bantay Gusali. Where just last year, they had to demolish some of the of the current um, facilities in the government building in the city hall to accommodate the PWD concerns. Okay, and these are some of their initiatives, other initiatives. So they have the Valenzuela Special Education Center, which is also under the office of the mayor, um, but a bit um, different. Um, it's another office that uh, manages the center. And then they also have the alert app um, they will be updating it coming soon for PWDs. Currently, it's with the health sign. So when the PWDs need um, emergency, they have to, um, the, they have they can access the app and uh, let the command center know that the PWDs would need help. Okay, and then so they're also doing house tagging for for Valenzuela with red PWD signs in every household that has uh, the PWDs. And just uh, some ending notes. Okay, so there are, there are a lot of initiatives being done by the city, but there are still questions on whether what will be next after the PWD database will be um, completed. It will be completed by November 2018, data gathering by July 2018. And then there may be another, cha uh, another change in terms of personnel. Uh, on their roles because they have finished their major road work and um, whether they will be owning more programs rather than referring um, their um, programs from other offices. So most of the offices um, are, um, most of the offices do their job for PWDs through referrals with the PDAO. So that would be it for Valenzuela. Okay, so next. Good afternoon, po. I'm Elizabeth Correg, and I worked with Don Quebrado, yung MC po kanina, for the Mandaluyan case. Ang title po ng case namin, madrama, no? Sana yun? <laughs> Hindi po yan. Okay, sabi niya, a second home, Mandaluyan City's Persons with Disabilities Affairs Office. Uh, the actual words po ay, um, pangalawang bahay. So the parents of the uh, children with disability share that the, the, their children are very comfortable with the uh, Pidao of Mandalay City and uh, to the extent that they call it Pangalawang Bahay. Uh, compared to the Supreme sabi po ng parents ay when they first learned that their children have disabilities, sabi na parang pasana nila yung mundo. But now they have somebody else to share the burden with. So ano po bang profile ng Mandalay City PWDs natin? They compose 1.3% of the total population, about 5,000. Uh, more, more, 
more or less 50-50, 54% males. Um, madami po ay single. Well, 28% kayo married. So yung section ko po for profile, ang dalagay ko doon, mandalo yung city PWD single, unemployed, aging. So hindi ko na po nilagay yung age. Very rich po yung data. Mandalo yung city is a very rich data base. So it's very, very nice to study the information. Uh, almost half have orthopedic disabilities followed by mental. And if you look at education, only a third, 35% have college degrees plus 1% post-grad. So, consistent po yung sa employment figures nila, about a third are employed. Uh, karamihan po na employed natin yung graduate po ng college and some high school. And most of those who are employed uh, have orthopedic disabilities. So, lesser con chances, feedback po ng mga taga-peso and pidaw mismo. If, uh, if you have disability other than orthopedic disability, lesser chances of getting employed. So, ito po yung building nila. No? So, they're not part of the main building. Very, um, mababa lang siya. It's a small building. Um, meron silang workshop on the side. Uh, Mandalay City is a pioneer in, in creating an office and providing services for PWDs. So, it, it was, the office was created 12 years prior to RA 170. So, they got an award, a Polidary Mobility Award, because of their initiatives for that. They don't have a federation, but there are 11 disabled people's organizations in the city. So my opportunity to create a federation out of that. Their budget, 3 to 5 million, if audit, more or less, represents 0.1% um, of the annual expenditure of Mandalayan City. So obviously, malaya po siya sa atin, expect na 0.5% split. Uh, if you compare it with the elderly, the elderly gets 0.46%. Uh, so malapit lapit po sa haraf. So, ito po yung staff nila. This, wala po siyang wala po siyang muna. Ano po ba? Ah, perfect. Andiyan po si, ayan po ang ating division chief, si Ms. Wena. Kasama po niya dito, si Mamina. So, they are here. Kompleto po sila. So, we have the division chief in pink over there by the side, Ms. Wena. Uh, she holds a salary rate 22 position. And then, she's supported by five utility workers. Uh, salary grade 1 to 3. So, inverted T. They have an inverted T na organization, similar to other local government offices. And then they, are, uh, they have two job orders and two uh, COS. Out of the 10 staff, four have disabilities. But on record, six permanent uh, versus 19 criteria. So malayo po yung uh, reality dun sa on paper. Just a quick focus on Ms. Wena. Um, she's been with the local government for 16 years. Uh, she has a special education graduate degree. That's why she started as an itinerant educator in the local Gulf before becoming a non-power specialist. And then she knows sign language, and then she she's certified to check, assess, correct, and customize wheelchairs. So major talaga engaged po siya sa sector, even if she's not a PWD. In the pictures and the pictures of parents, sila po yung parents of children with disabilities, and they have a livelihood through the help of PIDAD. It took me a workshop area where you also have the drums. Kasi meron pong uh, children with disability, German liars sa Mandalayang City. They performed for the Mandalayang City guests. And they also went to Thailand in 2017 to perform in a drum festival. They have the CW, the angels, uh, the silence movers. If you want to know how to teach children to dance, even if they, can, they can't hear music, you have to go to Mandalayang City. They, they subscribe to WHO's service delivery framework for wheelchairs. So they offer wheelchair customization services to their clientele. They have a rich database, as I told you. And they were able to require employment, uh, get employment slots to the peso and to the for livelihood. balls. Ito po sabi ng parents. Hindi ka nag-iisa may solusyon na mga bagay-bagay. They, they, the, the PIDAD was able to boost their confidence. Nahikita ng PIDAD ng word ng anak ko, di lang lawa, it's not just promises, no? They really deliver. Ngayon lang po mababasan, malalaman ng mga taga-mandalo yung sinabi po ng mga pinag-i-interview namin. Tapos, it's not a matter of, concern, matter of size but of concern. That was the statement of the administrator when I asked him, oh, ang baba ng percentage ng PWD population, how come you're investing? Kasi meron pang project teach si Mandalo yung city. 
that's separate from Bidawa. How would clients feel pag feel pag lahat ng nagserve sa kanila ng PWD? So when we ask them, okay lang ba yun if most of the team members are not PWDs? So they said it's important they should have PWD members. Only a few orgs are opening their doors to employ PWDs. Sana may employment din for the for for bulag and other PWDs. As I told you earlier, for orthopedic and disabilities ng employed natin. And sila lang naman ang datanong sa amin kung may kailangan ang PWD. This came from the third party contractor of SM. Kasi datanong si Mudala yung city whether they have slots because they observe the 10% each are complementary PWDs. So, kahit malayo, kahit sa tagamantulo yung PWD, bumunta siya ng fair view. Because mantulo yung as, as in. Okay, na po. Ang ganun po yung mantulo yung city. Ito po yung building po na sa entrance. Naalala niyo yung SGLG. So, requirement po ito sa entrance. Though, uh, PDAD needs to actively monitor pa. For example, nagsisipiliti na banggit naman dito. Sa entrance ng uh, TNP, jail complex, uh, restroom po mismo ng PDAD, wala tayong ano, L-shaped na grab bars, no? So, wala po. Sila mismo, hindi compliant yung kanilang restroom. Tapos yung po old building, yung meron pong one, one to two steps entrance for each building and lahat sa kanila, karamihan may uh, stairs. So, hindi rin po siya compliant. So, more or less, uh, ang feedback ko lang po is, minimum na yung, even if they have rich database, they can verify whether 1.3% na yung population ng disabled natin. Kasi yung rule of thumb natin, 10 to 15% globally. Creation of a federation, they have 11 DPOs, so pwede ko yun. Eligibility for promotion, if you remember, sabi ko, inverted T, yung structure and organization. So, marami pang space for yung promotion of the staff, except that may challenge of eligibility for them to get promoted. Um, separate project teach, I was asking, bakit nakahiwalay sa project teach? Shouldn't it be part of PIDAO? So, that's from Andalo yung city to answer. And lastly, to actively monitor accessibility law, um, observance of discounts, tapos yung physical requirements ng Magna Carta, no? Iba pang batas, may influence pa tayo sa monitoring. So, you know, thank you. You know I'm Don, and um, I'd like to share um, the findings of our study for Carmona. I did this um, research with Ms. Gerda Santos, and I'd like to um, acknowledge the presence of Ms. Roosevelt, Ms. Jen, and Ms. Leia, who warmly accommodated us when we went there. Okay, so um, our case study would be a whole new world for the PWDs of Carmona Cavite, without paving the way towards PWD empowerment, inclusion, and self-sufficiency. So we entitled this case study um, with this one because um, what we found out was how the government could actually um, make a huge difference especially to those at the margins, especially to those um, people at the sectors that are usually left behind. Uh, we found that as an inspiring story of how an initiative could turn into something big, given the passion and commitment of the people that are involved um, in this um, area. Okay, so um, from 2000 to present, um, Pidao started as a center um, that was launched in the local school and through various um, ordinances, uh, Pidao, um, Pidao became um, a separate department in 2017. So currently, there are 705 male and 499 female. Uh, there are 1,204 registered PWDs. That's roughly 1.2% of their total population. And uh, um, for the uh, top disabilities, we have um, orthopedic and followed by psychosocial and global delay and intellectual delay. Uh, as we can see, the the budget of Pidao in 2017 is 10.7 million. That's 1.4 percent of their total budget. That's um, how they are committed to implementing the projects they have in store for the PWDs of their municipality. So here are some photos of the Pidao team. 
currently uh, we have a municipal department had one since Pidao is considered as a department in their municipality. Uh, she has 33 staff complement, 11 of, 11 of them are permanent, 22 are casual in one job order. Six of these are PWDs. So worth mentioning is a quote from one of their PWD um, staff at Pidao. As an employee, I am happy that my disability has not barred me from becoming an inspiration to my fellow disabled. I am e even given the means to help them in their needs. Um, also worth mentioning is how uh, the people there actually um, highlight the need for puso at galing. Hindi sapat na galing lang yung meron. Kailangan meron kang puso para sa PWDs pag nagtatrabaho ka sa sektor na to. Um, given the amount of projects that they have for PWDs, Pidao is resourceful enough to partner not only within the LGU, but also outside of the LGUs with NGOs and private corporations, as well as the family of the PWDs and the community. Um, currently, there are also three PWD organizations in Carmona, namely 4K, Pidasi, and Buhay Autismo. Um, for, for their programs, um, it is uh, mainly divided into center-based and community-based. Um, in 2004, they were able to devise um, a framework for education and rehabilitation. So this starts with surveillance and detection, followed by diagnosis and referral, early intervention, spent tutorials, and bridging program. So some of the quotes are, Malaki ang improvement kasi may libreng education at therapists. Halos na ibibigay nila ang pangangailangan. Hatid sundo rin ang mga bata. This is to ensure that education is accessible to all their um, PWD students. They have a couple of vehicles that would actually uh, pick them up and bring them home. Ang laki na ng improvement sa anak ko kasi dati pag kinakausap mo siya walang eye contact, di siya naisasalita. Ay ngayon ang dadal na. Pagdating sa improvement, marunong na silang pakitungo sa ibang bata. So aside from education and rehabilitation, Pidal also provides livelihood um, through the help of the associations. And um, the, the Pidal also tries to partner with private corporations and companies such that um, their PWDs are given employment. And the LGU also has the Autism OK campaign wherein they hire um, people with autism in their um, municipality. Okay, so they also um, took a step further in being accessible to their constituents by not only um, complying with the um, with the infrastructure, but they also um, trained at least one of their staff with sign language um, such that um, when the PWD comes to every department, they would be able to communicate their needs. Pedal also plays a vital role in, in empowering their PWDs, especially those um, at the center, the, the children. Um, they have this yearly um, concerts where it, they showcase the talents of the little kids and they also support um, BWDs in all their endeavors, especially um, at the national and international level, that's all.